Hello, welcome to Sprit Laced. Last week in the Ados on the School class, we talked about gifts of utterance, gift of utterance, and we talked about prophecy, we talked about speaking in tongues, and the interpretation of tongues. The central truth for our last week lesson is that the gift of utterance enables believers to speak words of edification, exhortation, and come forth. The gift of utterance enables believers to speak word of, words of edification and comfort. Today, however, we'll be dealing with similar gift but a different one. So today we'll be talking about revelation gifts. So if today is your first time joining me, welcome to Spirit Lace. This is the Adult Sunday School class. So revelation gift is our topic and the text is 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 8 and 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 8 and 10. And I'll be reading in the New King James Version. Please feel free for to subscribe, to send this video to as many people as possible because I know it's going to really bless you. And in case I haven't introduced myself to you, my first time of you is, my name is Timtope David and you're welcome to Sunday School. Welcome to the channel, Spirit Laced. So 1 Corinthians chapter First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 8 and 10. And it says, For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit. And verse 10 says, To another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of Spirit, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of of tongues. Our central truth today is that God gives supernatural insight through the revelation gifts. God gives supernatural insight through the revelation gift. And the memory verse is taken from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8. It says, For to, for to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. Our evangelical uh, evangelism emphasis today is says that the manifestation of the revelation gifts awaken the hearts of those that believe not and expose the secrets of their heart just as it does for believers who are not living right and it challenges them to repentance in this topic in this class today we have three outline the first one is word of wisdom the second is word of knowledge the third is discerning of spirit. So word of wisdom, word of knowledge, and the third is discerning of spirit. A little bit of instruct introduction into our lesson. Please have your Bible ready. So, you know, where there is a supernatural, um, when there is a supernatural manifestation that reveals something, it will be one of the revelation gifts in operation. Just like the utterance gift we talked about last week, the revelation gifts are given to believers by the same Holy Spirit to profit the church. Revelation gifts enables the believer already filled with the Holy, Holy Spirit to have supernatural access to the secrets of God through the word of wisdom, word of knowledge and discerning of spirits. It must be noted that God demands purity before power and revelation or else the beneficiary may be manifested in maybe manifesting the gift in vain. Now let's quickly look at words of wisdom according to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 8. I know we've read it before but I'm going to read it again. So 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 8. It says it is it says for to one is given the word of wisdom through the spirit to another the word of knowledge through the same spirit say scripture tells us that wisdom is better than gold yeah words of wisdom is the supernatural declaration or revelation of the mind and the purpose of god concerning the future the gift of the word of wisdom transcends any human genius or insight it is a supernatural gift of God that only the Holy Spirit can impact. It speaks of an event that is yet to take place. And examples are 
are all around in the Bible. For instance, in Acts chapter 27, Acts chapter 27, verse, verse 10, you know, Paul advised um, the men. He says, men, I perceive that this voyage will end in disaster and much loss, um, not only of the cargo and the ship, but also of our lives. So in the scriptures, there's quite a number of, 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 of um, the gift of the words of wisdom. And when you also look at John, in the island of um, Patmos in Revelation 1, um, 2 and 3, many who manifest this gift are prophets. So to understand the term word of wisdom, we need to note that God had all wisdom and is divine and, and in his divine wisdom, he knows all about the future. He only reveals a bit of it at, at a time of need. So the word of wisdom is used in problem solving. The word of use, wisdom can be used also in solving difficult problems. When the apostles were distracted from preaching the gospel because of business matters, they chose certain believers to help them as administrators. Then the word of wisdom is also used in defending the faith amongst unbelievers. We are all instructed to defend the faith. This is the reason the scripture describes the gift as word of wisdom and not the gift of wisdom. Many times the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge operate together. I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for all men to salvation. And this is why Sunday school is quite important and it has helped my journey of faith. And please, if you're not ashamed, please just share it. I mean, it might not be your cup of tea right now, but it could be somebody else's cup of tea. Please share and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thank you. We'll quickly look at the word of knowledge now. The word of knowledge, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8. See, this gift is also a supernatural declaration or a revelation of an event. Or occurrence that is that is currently taking place and has already occurred so there are examples in the scripture God has a storehouse of knowledge from eternity past to eternity future he knows everything but he doesn't reveal everything to to man he gives him a word or part of what he knows the word of knowledge is therefore a fragment of God's knowledge revealed to one of his children. It is a peep into the mind of God. Hence, the gift is described as word of knowledge and not just knowledge as some erroneously put it. The gift of the word of knowledge is a supernatural ability to understand what has divinely, um, what was divinely inspired. Um, so, Again, it is, it is a supernatural ability to understand what was divinely inspired by the scripture and what was not. So the gift of the word of knowledge refers to the ability to know facts about situations or a, a spiritual principle that could not have been known by natural means. So this allows someone to see a situation as God sees it. A note of warning though, we are not to take advantage of it for personal gain. Like all other gifts of the spirit, the word of knowledge is never given for a believer's own personal advantage. To take advantage of another believer or to embarrass someone. It is to build up the church. The word of knowledge is the supernatural understanding of some type of truth. While the word of wisdom uses knowledge for its proper end, the furtherance of God's kingdom and the manifestation of the sons of God. Amen. So we can establish that the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge would most sometimes work hand in hand. It is a, is this a supernatural ability to understand what was divinely inspired by the scripture you know sometimes when you're reading the scripture and you don't even have you know 
right understanding for it. The Holy Spirit just gives you an inspiration, an insight into what it means. Yeah. And that is what the word of knowledge can do. Now let's quickly look at discerning of spirit. Discerning of spirit. Discerning of spirit, you know, that's quite interesting. See, not all revelation comes from God. And certainly not everything that appears spiritual is from the Holy Spirit. So when we have an insight about what is taking place in the spiritual realm, our first response should always be prayer. The sermon has historically been praised as a valuable trait, allowing those who possess it to avoid costly mistake or misfortune. The gift of discerning spirit, the gift is to recognize whether or not something is truly from God and in accordance with righteousness. This is the supernatural ability to see and no event and happenings in the spirit realm not being suspicious. For example, in Joshua chapter 5, verse 14, and in 2 Kings chapter 4, 9 to 37, see the Shunammite women perceived Elijah to be a man of God. And Peter also perceived Simon the sorcerer. Yeah, so to discern means to see, that is seeing into the spiritual realm. All visions are the manifestation of discerning of spirit. A vision might bring what a word of wisdom or knowledge, but the vision itself is the gift of discerning of the spirit. The discerning of spirit gives us insight into the spirit world. This gift is for it's not for discerning just devils or spiritual or evil spirit only. It is also um, a gift that gives us insight into the realm of the spirit of both good and bad. Sometimes the gift of discernment is a knowing. And, you know, that knowing can actually be, can be seen as being familiar or a gut instinct. But actually, it does not originate or emanate with us or from us. It is often um, a warning from God. If we sense maybe pride, aversion, cultism, or you know, or deceit um, in any form or any form of evil with a person or a place, our spirit grows very uncomfortable. So we may not know exactly what is wrong with the person or the place or his or our message, but we will sense the danger and recognize the warning to be on guard. See, the gift of discerning of spirit is not the gift of suspicion or judgment. This gift, like other gifts of the spirit, are always for the edification and the building of the body of Christ. As you can imagine, the gift of discernment of spirit has great potential. Therefore, it is crucial to use wisdom while exercising this gift. You know, sometimes you can just be in a place and you say, oh, I don't know, I don't, it doesn't feel... I don't think I should be here. Or somebody is giving a message and you, you can always sense almost immediately, pick it up that no, this word that this person is not that it, that this person is speaking is not inspired by the Holy Spirit. And then you'll be able to, you know, sometimes when you meet some false prophet, they would sometimes scare you with all this bad stuff and everything. Yes, I know sometimes. It is good to know there's bad things as well, but sometimes this false prophet enlarges this, you know, all those bad, bad things and instill fear in you. Prophecy is not meant to give you fear. When, when this, or the word of God is not meant to give you fear, it's meant to warn you. It's meant to help you know how to fight, how to position yourself in a place of prayer. And discerning the spirit is the gift of discernment is very, very, very important important and discerning spirit you'll be able to know that when the spirit is speaking that is not the spirit of god at that instance you're able to shut it down and you're saying no this is not what the lord says about me that cannot be true about me well that's your opinion but that is not what it is so you're able to shut certain things down i mean sometimes people just run from one place to the other because they are trying to find god but let me tell you, God is as near as the breath in your nostrils. God is as near as the clothes on your body. 
You just need to be calm and make it intention. Be intentional. Read. See, when you read the word of God, you, you can never remain the same. Spending time in the word of God and praying, you can never remain the same. And these are the places, this the, and the, the, the place and gives you the opportunity and gives the Holy, the Holy Spirit opportunity to come to you and commune with you and also see your weakness and then and help you through your weakness. And you receive all the, you, you mostly receive the gifts of the Spirit in a place of fellowship, in a place of prayer, in a place of communion. And then you will not be deceived by everyone who pretends to be a Christian, a child of God, a pastor, a prophet, or an apostle. Because after all, there's so many apostles coming out this time. There's so many prophets. There's so many preachers of the word of God. But the discerning of the spirit is recognizing whether something is truly from God and in accordance with righteousness. Now, let's quickly look at the conclusion and the life application. As this lesson, uh, uh, as this lesson on the word of wisdom, word of knowledge and discernment of spirit comes to a conclusion, it is necessary for people gifted in this area to be careful in their area of oppression. The gifts are not meant for personal gains or for suspicion or, dis or discernment of motives. They are not for one to claim superiority over others. The purpose of this gift, like the others, is for the building of the body of Christ and showcasing the power of God within the church and also among those who believe not. Revelational gifts, as the name goes, reveal something in the past, present, and in the future. Those who operate this gift are privileged to see into the throne, in the throne room of God and bring its secrets unto men in the natural realm. Where this gift does not operate, the church loses its privilege of knowing the mind and the purpose of God as they should. Most who operate this gift are prophets, though all are not necessarily prophets. Every believer should covet, should covet this, this gift. Before we go away, you know, I want us to think about the I want you to think about the difference of um between the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge. And this will mean maybe perhaps you'll have to pause, rewind, and, you know, search the scripture. And, you know, the question you should go away is, why are these gifts not common in our churches, despite their great benefit to the body of Christ? One of the things that I think is not making um, this gift as common in our churches, despite their great benefit to the body of Christ, is that, you know, we... As Christians, as individuals at the church, and if every individual does not go to a, to the secret place, the secret place, the Bible says that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Lord. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God in Him will I trust. You know, the secret place of the Lord, of the Most High, is a place of refuge, is a place of revelation, is a place of gift, is a place of, of, of knowing. So if we individuals who are Christians or who, who identify as, as Christians do not intentionally, intentionally go to God the Father, commune with Him, fellowship with Him, we would not, the, the pouring, the out, yes, God said that he's going to pour out all his spirit upon all flesh. Yeah, I, for I will pour in, in the book of Joel, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your young men, he talked about young men, young old men, and everybody in between. Yeah, but to be a beneficial, a beneficiary of the spirit of God, of the spirit that is being poured out, you have to make yourself available in the place of prayer, in the place of communion with God, in the place of fellowship. Fellowshipping means you're praying, you're reading the scripture, you're fasting, you are desiring endlessly. God wants to have fellowship with us. And the reason why this is not happening in our church is because we have become very busy. And sometimes we only focus on the blessings of God, 
yes, God is going to bless you. He's going to, you know, do all these things. And sometimes you also, sometimes you also fight in a place of, in, in not so much in an advantage place. You know, yes, we know that God will fight for us. Yes, we know that God is going to bless us. Yes, we know that God is going to do all these wonderful things. But what is it that you want to do for God? And to be able to do things for God, you have to be empowered. The gift has to be released so that you can be a blessing to others. I mean, somebody preached to you that you're saved. The person, somebody preached to you, but you, what are you doing? Are you just sitting back enjoying the blessings of God, enjoying the gifts of God, or hoping that, oh, God is going to bless me, should bless me, and would bless me? But to be able to exercise this gift, we need to be intentional as individual Christians. Make it a priority to desire this gift. If you do not desire this gift and pray for it earnestly, it does not come. We'll just go through the scriptures and say, yeah, that's it. And, you know, sometimes some of us have a not challenged attitude towards the gift of the Holy Spirit. And this gift of the Holy Spirit is available to every single person who desire. Paul says you should desire and covet. This is not greed. Covet the best gift. You're not able to make a difference in your family, in your community, without the gift of the Holy Spirit, without showcasing. The, the Bible says that you're a battle ask. Acts of God. You cannot go to a, to a place of, of, of battle without having the whole hammer. The gift are part of the things that you can use to fight from an advantage point. As, see, the gift of revelation is actually of the, one of the great, one, the greatness gifts. By the time the Holy Spirit begins to reveal to you certain things about you, certain things about somebody, you know how to pray, you know when to pray, you know the things. The Holy Spirit begins to inspire you on the things that you need to pray for. And thereby, you're not just impacting yourself. You're also fighting for that person. You're fighting for the body of Christ. You, you might have somebody in the congregation who earnestly needs prayer. But if the Holy Spirit... If you're privileged enough to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will, will enable you to begin to use this gift for the body of Christ. And mind you, nobody, nobody who gives their time to God, nobody who gives their time and their, you know, their energy to God, who he doesn't bless, who he doesn't have a package for. There's always a good package for everyone, not just here on earth, even in eternity. So, I personally think that it is high time that we as Christians should invest our time, should be intentional about it, to covet endlessly the best gift and um, spend time in the place of prayer, spend time in the place of fellowship. See, the gift of revelation, a gift of greatness. We are fundamentally what we know and with wisdom, we can do anything. Someone who is blessed with this gift and knows how to apply it with, with God's wisdom, he has the grace, has the grace of operating from an advantage point. A person who lacks wisdom lives in a world without light. As our strength is gained by the use of our hands, so do we gain God's wisdom through revelation and therefore, the person who becomes so wise that everything they do works is because they are privileged by God to see. To be proven courageous, we must first withstand the struggle, the struggle of time, the struggle of being intentional. Our courage and knowledge may never be revealed to Humanity, if permitted, to stay concealed under, underneath our lack of initiative. God can transform our weaknesses, flaws, and mistakes through the gift of revelation. It shapes our courage with strength, knowledge with information, and we are required to desire and covet the best gift for his kingdom assignment and for the expansion of greatness for our life, the expansion and the expression of and for greatness for our lives.
We have now come to the end of this class. Please do feel free to share. So I come your way some other time. Have a wonderful week. My name is Tim Topper David. Take care.